In a mobile device application, navigation is handled by shifting from one view to another. The views are considered to be in a stack, to which you can add views and subtract them. When you add a view, it's called pushing a view, and when you remove a view, it's called popping. I'll demonstrate this in this version of the application, which you can import from the exercise files as viewnavigation.fxp. If you see the Run Configurations dialog box pop up, set the launch method to desktop, choose a device to simulate, and then click Run. In this version of the application, I've added a bitmap image to the home view. It's scaled and placed on the screen. And I'm going to create a secondary view and then a button on the home view that will navigate to it. So I'll close the application and return to Flash Builder. I'll go into Design View. And then I'll drag in a button and toss it on top of the view. Don't worry too much about where it's placed. We'll set that in code. Then I'll go to Source View. And I'll set the following properties. X will be 236 and Y will be 331. The label will be Begin. I'll save and run the application. And there's my button laid on top of the photograph. Now I'll create a new view. A view is just an MXML component. This application will eventually have three views. The second view will show a list of data and the third will show detail. I'll go to the Package Explorer and right click on the Views package and choose New, MXML Component. Flash Builder automatically sets the superclass or super component as spark.components.view, and that's just what I need. I'll name this first view Tour List and click Finish. And then I'll create one more view, selecting New, MXML Component, and I'll call this one Tour Detail. Here's my Tour List. I'll set the title to Tour List with a space in the middle. That will be displayed at the top of the view. And then I'll do the same thing in Tour Detail. I'll set the title to Selected Tour. I'll save changes to both components. And then I'll come back to the Home view. When the user touches the button, that will be registered as a click event. So I'll add a click event handler to the button. I'll name the click handler Begin Click Handler. And then I'll jump to the method and place the cursor where I need to start coding. In order to navigate from the first view to the second, I'm going to use a method of a property called Navigator. The Navigator property is a property of all views, and it refers to the application's Navigator object. I'll use this code, navigator.pushView. The pushView method requires the name of a class that will be used as the new view. I'll pass in views.tourList. This will result in creating an instance of the named component and then adding it to the view stack and then navigating directly to that view immediately. I'll save that change and go to tour list. I'll go to design view and I'll add in a button control. I'll give this button control a label of return and then I'll go over to the properties view and set an on click event handler. I'll name this click handler return click handler and then I'll once again use the navigator object. In order to go back in the view stack you can either use the pop view method, which would mean you're going back one view, or you can use pop to first view, which would remove all of the views on top of the first view and reveal the first view. I'll use pop view to go back one level. And now I'm ready to run my application. When the application first opens, it shows the home view. I'll click the begin button and that takes me to the tour list view. I'll click return and that returns to the home view. You can add as many views to a mobile device application as you want, and then you're moving from one screen to the next to the next. You can also modify the transitions. By default, the animation is a horizontal slide from left to right and vice versa. But you can also define your own transitions using whichever flex effect you want. So that's a basic look at how navigation works in a view-based mobile application. In the next videos, I'll show you how to add data and display that data using special components that are included in the Flex 4.5 SDK.